This is Doug Keller flying his Super Cub, known as Husky Cub. He took a Super Cub wing and he adapted a Aviat Husky flap to it. And he built a very large wing Super Cub. He was actually still testing it out during the making of this video. You'll see some yarn off the one flap so that he could get some data on how well it was working. But as you'll see in this video, it's a pretty impressive cub. It's a 180 horsepower cub, and it's got a 90 inch prop. Um, it's not a light cub. I think this cub weighed over 1,200 pounds. It's got three inch forward gear and um, stock angle of attack, stock length fuselage, stock tail feathers, just a big wing, big flap, big aileron, 35 inch bush wheels, and it really performs. And Doug's a good stick. I talked Doug into getting up bright and early this morning. We took turns landing and taking off from the back channel of the Willamette River here. Kind of a neat little spot dead ends. You can't go around up the river because it gets too tight. But with Doug at the stick, it's no worries. I don't know if I said it yet, but Doug named this cub appropriately Husky Cub because of the Husky flaps. They're not a stock length Husky flap, but they have the Husky hangers, which makes them a Fowler flap. This airplane also was one of the first airplanes to have 35 inch bush wheels. I machined the billet wheels for this aircraft because there was no cast wheels available at that time. So Doug and I were some of the first guys to be flying the 35s on these small airplanes built lightweight. This tire was originally designed for the Beaver and the Platus Porter and the tire weighed over 60 pounds. The tires that we're sporting only weigh about 37 to 39 pounds, I believe. I'm not exactly sure how many Cubs Doug had built at this point in time, but he's an amazing craftsman. Attention to detail is top notch and probably knew more about Cubs than anybody I'd met up to that point. He's also an engineer and uh, really knows how to modify and build things better. Can't say enough about him. One thing to note here, we're landing upriver um, pretty much, I think, exclusively in this video. And uh, one of the reasons we usually land up river is because you have the flow of the water and when you're landing on water it's not about your airspeed it's about your ground speed and you don't want to get too slow because then you'll penetrate unless you're in fairly shallow water it's going to be really bad and even if you're in fairly shallow water it can still be bad if you don't have the expertise to handle it so if you're going to hydroplane on water you really need to start practicing and um, don't be out there practicing when it's windy because the wind is actually worse because it's going to give you a slower ground speed and in effect you're going to penetrate sooner than if you had no wind and a higher ground speed. So it's more about ground speed than air speed. Air speed um, can be very deceiving and if you've got enough wind there's really no reason to hydroplane. You're just asking for trouble. Use the wind in your favor and just use the actual land to land. And if it's not windy, then you use the water to slow yourself down and it becomes ground speed versus air speed. This was before I had bought my 1080 camera so this is not high definition video. It was all filmed in 3CCD 
it was an expensive camera at the time, but you're looking at video that's well over 10 years old now. So um, take that into consideration when you're critiquing the quality of this video. Um, it was a 3CCD camera, but it's not 1080i, so there you go. This is what you had back then. Obviously there isn't very much wind this particular morning we're flying, so we're really landing and taking off using just the performance of the airplane and not really getting a lot of performance from wind. Um, as you'll see, our takeoffs are still reasonably short, um, but we are light. You know, it's just me and the airplane. I'm probably running right now, I'm probably running with about 25 gallons or less of fuel. And uh, Doug is probably running with 20 gallons of fuel and just by himself. Our airplanes are fairly evenly matched. This airplane weighed a, probably approximately 1325 right here. Um, I never officially weighed it uh, after I put the 35s on it. I did a weight and balance calculation and uh, came up with the 1325. This airplane originally weighed 1257 when I finished it on 31 inch bush wheels. Back then I was supporting a 84 1P235 prop and that was pitched to 43. This propeller is a 90 inch prop and it's pitched to 33. It's quite a bit heavier. It, I think, added close to six pounds to the nose. But the trade off is amazing. Um, it took my takeoff roll from about 150 feet to 100 feet. And that wasn't doing anything to the horsepower, that was just purely propeller performance. I actually really miss Bushwhacker 1.0, which is what I consider this airplane. I wrecked it in 2014 in, an Al in Alaska. Um, I was up there moose hunting and I'd finished the moose season and we'd gone um, out to the Lake Iliamna area. Uh, I was out in high winds and it's a fairly long story, but I'll condense it. Um, when I left Iliamna Airport, I was seeing 40 miles an hour decrease in my ground speed, so there was 40 mile an hour winds at 1,000 feet, and I was um, in the process of landing. It was a fairly long open area, but it was surrounded by rising terrain, and um, I probably, looking back on it, I probably should have just said, nah, this isn't a good place to land. But um, I had a goal in mind, and whenever you set goals to be someplace, it's um, not a good thing. And so even though I really wasn't worried at the time, um, I was almost probably 30 feet off the ground, and I'd kind of been milking my way down um, when I was caught by a gust. And at that point, I was really close to the ground when I was caught by the gust, and it put me on a knife edge. And when I was on that knife edge, I didn't know it at the time, but my, propel my uh, wing made contact, my right wing made contact with the ground, and I was trying to power out of this knife edge position that I was in, so I'm at full power, and uh, I couldn't get it to roll back, and the wind felt like it was underneath me, pushing me in a turn to the right, and so after what seemed like, you know, a very short time period, I mean, it, it happened so fast, but what it felt like was it, as I was dragging that wing across the ground, which I couldn't tell, it felt like I was slowly being pulled nose first into the ground and I figured well there's no point in going in hard full power I might as well chop the power and I really wasn't going very fast at that point and when I chopped the power it fell off that wing 
came down on the left gear, it broke the left gear leg off at the axle, which come to find out later, I actually had a crack in that axle, and so it probably would have failed eventually anyway. But when I did break that axle, it um, then got my left wing tip, and um, I got my prop at that point. And so I climbed out of the airplane and looked at the situation. The wind was gusting awfully, and um, I was really worried that I was going to lose the airplane before I could get it tied down. Um, that's a whole other story in itself. But during the night, the airplane was basically picked up from that position, taken about 100 yards and slammed upside down. And at that point, it became less of a slight incident and a total rebuild. And that's what's brought me to Bushwhacker 2.0 now. And eventually, I'll post some video of Bushwhacker 2.0. But for now, I'm just going through old video. Owning and flying airplanes, bush type airplanes in particular, has both risk and reward. I spent the next year finishing a cub I had started. I called that cub GM Cub for Greg Miller. And um, that cub was similar to the Husky Cub, except that it had a double slotted flap, but it had the big wing. And I flew it for a couple years, and as I was flying that airplane, I thought about what I wanted to do when I rebuilt Bushwhacker. I spent about a year and a half putting Bushwhacker back together. Bushwhacker changed quite a bit. Some things I like, some things I don't. But as with everything, there's always compromises. And so as I've flown Bushwhacker 2.0, both in adventuring and just playing, I have come to really like the airplane and what it can do for me. Oh, I forgot. I actually did post a video of Bushwhacker 2.0. It has a little bit of footage from when I was moose hunting in Alaska in September. That particular footage, it's pretty crude. It was shot with just a iPhone. We uh, didn't really set out to actually do any video, but when I got home, I thought, you know, I want to throw something up so people can see Bushwhacker. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't uh, turn you guys off too bad, but eventually I'll get some decent video of Bushwhacker up here, and uh, then you can actually see what the performances of that airplane. That particular video was shot in a drainage that was pretty deep in a canyon. Obviously I had to keep in mind that I was going to be operating out of there with a load of moose meat and all of our gear and needing to be able to come and go even if the wind was wrong. So there's lots of considerations when you're actually using an airplane for other than just play. I spent five weeks in Alaska this year. I left August 22nd and returned at the end of September. It was quite the epic adventure. We went all the way up north. We she fished. We, well, John hunted for caribou. We saw muskox north of Nome. We went to the Serpentine Hot Springs. We went to Wild Lake above Bettles. We went to Elusive Lake on the north side of the Brooks Range. It was quite the epic adventure. I flew almost 100 hours in five weeks. So I was actually ready to be done flying once I got home. Of course, that wears off pretty fast, and within a week, I was ready to hop back in the airplane. I currently am doing an engine overhaul on Bushwhacker 2.0. The engine made it to 3,300 hours, 
it's a roller engine. It's a Lycoming IO360 C1C. And I just wanted to go through it, put everything new. It's going to have 10 to 1 pistons. And um, so I should actually gain some horsepower when it's all said and done. So right now I'm currently flying a Super Cub that I built um, during the last winter. It's a fairly stock Super Cub. It's got a uh, 0320 which is the first cub I've built with uh, 160 horse it does have 10 to 1 pistons and I'll shoot some video of it soon also if you've made it this far through the video the next segment is a short segment I did on bushwhacker when I had finished it and I made the first video big rocks long props volume 1 I'm here to tell you about my airplane Bushwhacker. It was conceived after flying an M5 for a number of years and wanting more performance than I was getting from my M5. So I came up with this design. It's an M5 fuselage with an M7 wing and it sports the large flap, 126 inches of flap. Um, it has an extensive list of modifications that make it different from a Maul. It starts with an 0360 engine that has 10 to 1 pistons and a custom exhaust. It's running a 90 inch fixed pitch prop, pitched at 32. The gear on this airplane is 5 inch extended. It's my design. It's heavy duty. Uh, so far, indestructible. It has safety cables to arrest if the oleo should break. It's sporting 35 inch tall Tundra tires, which were the first set in the world to go on this size of an airplane. They've been lightened. The wheels are my design. They're built from a solid 12 inch billet chunk of aluminum CNC machine. It has a six inch brake disc and a double puck caliper. And the brake pads are my design also. They're uh, interchangeable with the Cleveland pad, but better stopping power, longer lasting, and uh, really a, a great add-on feature to any brake system. The airplane has a custom carbon fiber cowling. It has a titanium firewall and titanium egress tunnel. The floorboards are uh, fiberglass with a Nomax core. It has really lightweight doors. They're a seaplane door. Um, they, they have a, a polycarbonate that is 80 thousandths thick, which makes them light and strong with a hard coating so they don't scratch. The airplane has 50 degrees of flaps. It has an extended baggage area, a metal belly to keep the rocks out of the fabric. has a very basic instrument panel, a comm radio, engine instruments that you need and uh, Garmin 296. The airplane flies at 90 miles an hour top speed and lands at 40 miles an hour. It's a very capable airplane and very fun to fly. And uh, this is Bushwhacker.